Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be connecting up this weather station temperature and humidity transmitter to Home Assistant using this LilyGo TTGo LOR32 433 megahertz microcontroller. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase some of these, I'll put a link to them in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So the prerequisites for this is having an MQTT broker set up within Home Assistant, and you'll need the username and password and the IP address of that. So I'll put a link below to a video where I set that up. So this device here has an ESP32 microcontroller on it. It comes with a little antenna. So I'll screw that in. So we're going to program this using Open MQTT Gateway. So what this will do is this temperature sensor will transmit temperature and humidity data. It will be picked up by this. This will send it over Wi-Fi using MQTT to Home Assistant. So to set this up, I need to connect it to the computer. I'm going to use a micro USB cable. You want to make sure your cable supports data. Now you only need data when you're initially setting this up. Once you're done setting it up, you can plug this in with just a charge cable and a USB charger and put it wherever you want and it will continue to operate. Now the weather sensor will need some batteries, so I'll put those in. Now on this and many other weather sensors, you're going to see a little switch on the bottom. This has a one, two, three. So you can think of those as like channels. So I'm going to switch this to two. So remember that, we'll come back to that later. And let's see, I'll also switch this to Fahrenheit there. So we're at 75.7 Fahrenheit and 60% humidity. So now let's head over to my computer and get this configured. Okay, so I'm at my MacBook here. I'm using the Chrome browser. I know on the Mac this does not work with Safari. You have to use Chrome. I'm not sure on Windows. But you want to go to openmqttgateway.com. And on this site, we're going to configure and set up the LilyGo TTGo. So I'm going to plug it into my computer using USB. Then we'll go down here to upload and I'll click on upload from web. There's a note here if you're on a Mac and you have a LilyGo LoRa 32V 2.1 board, which I do, I need to install the CH9102 serial chip. So if you have a computer like mine, you may need to install this driver and it says your serial port will look like this, WCH USB serial. So we'll see that in just a second. So I plugged the board into my computer using USB. I want to choose the firmware here. So this is a big long list and I want to go to LilyGo RTL433. So RTL433 is software that can decipher radio frequencies on the 433 megahertz band. So that's what we'll be running on this. So I'll click on that. I've checked erase flash, erases all saved data. And then I want to click install. So now you can see we have these serial ports up here and we have this WCH USB. So if you don't see this here, you may need to install this special driver. So I'm going to hit connect here. You'll see it's initializing, preparing, erasing, and this will install it. Now, if you have trouble, sometimes you need to restart your browser and unplug and re-plug in the device and things like that. I've had pretty good success with it. Every once in a while, I'll have to do those things. But if it doesn't work, usually I'll just give it another go and it'll work the second time around. Okay, so that's all done. So now I'm going to head over to my phone and I'm going to go into the Wi-Fi settings and we're going to look for an access point that's set up on this device. Okay, so on my phone we can see this Open MQTT Gateway LilyGo RTL433. So I'm going to tap on that. So it's going to bring up a web portal interface and that's how we're going to configure this device. So we'll click on Configure Wi-Fi. We'll type in the SSID. So you're giving this Wi-Fi credentials. It also has a list Next, we're going to enter in the MQTT server. So mine is 192.168.7.94. And then we want to enter in the MQTT user and the password. Then we can change things like the gateway name. So I have another one of these, so I'm going to call this V2. And we can change the base topic. And I'll hit done and save. So I'm back at the computer now. So something to keep in mind is that that page will eventually time out. So you want to have all your information ready so you can get it in there quickly. So now the LilyGo TTGo has connected to Wi-Fi and it's connected to the MQTT broker on Home Assistant. So I'm going to go into MQTT Explorer. So I have this connecting up to the MQTT broker in Home Assistant. I'll hit connect. And here we can see this Home Lily. So if I open that up and open this up, we can see this RTL433 to MQTT. I'll open that up and here we see a weather station. Now I'm going to leave this open because I'm waiting for this other weather sensor. And actually you can press the transmit button on the back of it to transmit it instantly. But I'll look here in factory. I think that's the one I want. Yes. So I'll click on this. 
So if you remember, I clicked that channel to two. So if we look here, this says in factory TH. Now this Nexus TH is another brand of weather sensor I have, looks kind of similar. So what you'll want to do is have the sensor near this and you can look and you can match up numbers so you know you're looking at the correct sensor. And actually I think it's this bottom one is the one I want because it says 60% and the temperature is in Celsius. So let me switch this back to Celsius and we're 24.2. So I've matched up my sensor with this data. So I know this is the correct line for the transmitter I'm looking at. So back to the switch, this has a two here. If I switch that switch to one or three, that would show up here as a one or three. Now that's going to come into play later because this next number where it says 199 can actually change. So this can get a little bit confusing, but I'll leave this screen up here and we're going to go into Home Assistant and we'll configure this to show up in Home Assistant. Okay, so we're in Home Assistant. So to add this, I'm going to edit some text files and I'll walk you through that. So I'm going to open up a different instance of Home Assistant that has this set up already and I'll walk through how we get to it. So we'll go to Settings, Add-ons, Add-on Store, and I'll search here for File, Editor. Now some people use VS Code or things like that. I'm very happy with File Editor, so I'll hit Install here. I'm going to turn on Watchdog and I'll turn on Show in Sidebar and I'll hit Start. So I like to have this in my sidebar, especially as I'm doing lots of configuration, I may turn that off later. So I'll click on this here. I just started it up. If it says bad gateway or something, wait a minute and then try it again. So I want to click on the little folder in the upper left here and we'll go to configuration.yaml. So we'll go over to my one that's already set up and you can see I added a line here that was MQTT colon space exclamation point include space MQTT.yaml. So I'll just copy this and paste that in here and I'll hit save. Then I'll copy this mqtt.yaml. So now we'll click new file and we'll paste in that mqtt.yaml. I'll hit okay. So that will now show up down here and I think that should work. So let's go to developer tools and we'll hit check configuration and it says configuration will not prevent home assistant from starting. Let's go back to file editor and let's change this to MQTTQ and I'll hit save. Now let's go to developer tools and I'll hit check configuration. And you can see here it says configuration invalid and it gives us the error. So I wanted to show you what the error looks like so it's familiar to you and you know what to look for. When it's green, it's good. So I'll go back and fix that. And I'm going to go to the folder in the upper left now. I'll go back down to MQTT.yaml. And now I need to enter in the YAML for this temperature sensor. So I'll go in the already built configuration and I'll find one of the sensors here. I think this is a good one right here. So now I'm back at the mqtt.yaml, the new one we created, and I want to type in sensor colon, then hit enter. And now I'm going to paste in the YAML. And we're going to go through and edit this a little bit. But when you type this out, you need to type space, space, hyphen, space, name, colon, and then the name. I called this temp sensor. And then we have the state topic, and we'll get back to that. Then we have icon is MDI colon thermometer. And you don't have to have all of these in. It depends on how you want to do it. And then we have unit of measure is degree Celsius. Force update is true. Value template. So what this is doing is this will round it to the nearest tenths. And this 0.1 is not Fahrenheit, it's float. And then the unique ID is temp sensor, device class is temperature, and state class is measurement. So this is mostly ready, except for this state topic is not correct. So we're going to go back into MQTT Explorer. And where I had this sensor here, I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. I'll go back into my configuration and I will paste that in here. So this should work right now. The problem you can have is if we ever swap the batteries out on this, this last ID can change. So I kind of have an issue right now because it looks like there's other sensors around that are on this same topic. But if you don't, you can actually change this 199 to a plus symbol. So that means it doesn't really matter what the number is there. So any temp sensor that is on channel two with the same topic 
will be red. So if you change out the batteries, it will still work. So if this is a tricky thing, you might try different brands of temp sensors if you have other ones, because we are not only reading our temp sensor, we're reading any temp sensor that this antenna is picking up on this LilyGo device. So this could be your neighbor's temp sensors, and not only temp sensors, it'll pick up all sorts of things, moisture sensors, security systems, things like that. It will show all sorts of data. So I'm going to leave this at 199, and I will be able to go in and change this later if the batteries die. So I will hit save here. I'll go back into developer tools. I'll hit check configuration. I can go down here and click on manually configured MQTT devices. That will reload. Let's go to overview now. And here we have our temp sensor. And you can see we have the little icon here. Let's click on this. Now, if we click on the gear here, we can look at the icon and you can see that has that MDI colon thermometer. So there are a number of different icons here. You can scroll down and find the best one that suits what you're trying to enter. Then we have a unit of measure. So if you remember on the MQTT Explorer, the data is coming in as Celsius, but it's going to display in Fahrenheit. Then we have the default precision. This is the entity name. And then we can have an area. There's voice assistance and other things. So I'll close this here. Close this here. We can also change the name there. And here we can see the data for the temp sensor is coming up. It's 76.5. Now, if I look at the sensor, it's 76.2, but there can be a little bit of a lag while it's updating. Now, it will also show history over time. So let's actually go into this other one here. And I have some temperature sensors set up. And here you can see a chart of the temperatures it has been recording. So let's go back into the MQTT Explorer. Now on that sensor, we also had humidity. So I'll go into my already configured instance. And here I have humidity set up. So I'll take it into my new one, paste it in here. You don't have to put a space here. I just think it's easier to read. So I will name this humidity sensor. Now the state topic is going to be the same because that state topic had the temperature and the humidity data on it. So I'll just copy and paste that down here. We have a water percent and the device class here is humidity. So we'll hit save. We'll go to developer tools, check your configuration, and then we'll hit manually configured MQTT entities. I'll go to my dashboard and here we have the humidity sensor also. So since I just restarted that, it's not showing up here, it should show up in a second. So I just pressed the button on it to make it show up a little faster. So this is the default dashboard. I can go up here to edit dashboard and I can add a card with like a gauge and I'll call this temp unit is Fahrenheit and the entity is, we'll say temp sensor and you can set minimum, maximum. You can display it as a needle or a gauge. So a needle I think would be nice there and I'll hit save. So here we have the temperature sensor showing up as a gauge on our dashboard. So I probably wouldn't have both of these on at the same time. So if we look at that YAML we added here, we had the device class was temperature and Home Assistant has different device classes. You can see we have humidity and temperature and for certain device classes, it will actually store historical data. So since we use temperature and humidity here, when we click on this and click show more, we have this chart and we can actually go back and look at historical data here because it's going to store that data since Home Assistant knows it's a temperature and that is the type of data that gets stored. So I'll go in here real quick and I'll add a second card for the humidity, another gauge, unit is percent, and then I will delete this card. So there we go. So here we can see this says MQTT Gateway. So this device can be plugged in anywhere. So you can have this within range of your temperature sensors and your Wi-Fi, somewhere in the middle of those things. So this is one I just have for testing right now, but I have another one of these and I 3D printed a little case to put this in. It's just so I can mount it somewhere, set it up right. And then you just plug it in somewhere to USB for power. Draws very little current. And I think this is a great option for adding temperature sensors. So there are many uses for this. You could put these temperature sensors outside. I mean, that's kind of what they're made for. You could put these in your freezer or fridge or maybe certain parts of the house. And then you can use this gateway to connect them up into Home Assistant. The nice thing is these are all battery powered and this is common hardware to get. There's nothing exotic about these. So you can use these that came with a weather station you already have, or I just purchased these separately. So this is just barely touching on what you can do with this. 
So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.